form. But Ryan Searle starting things off, winning the ball. And Ryan Searle, no doubt, mm, Mark sorry. Webster hoping to go one better after his run to the final at the very start of the Pro Tour campaign, losing out to Luke Humphreys here in Barnsley uh, just a couple of months ago. T6. Yeah, definitely looking to get that first title of the year, Ryan Searle. Into the top 16 in the world now. 139. That's well, just outside. But Ryan Searle has made real inroads in the sport in the last 18 months to Eight. two years. Almost clinched that first TV ranking title at the end of the year in Minehead. And it was in Minehead where Nathan Aspinall won his one and only TV ranking title, the UK Open. But good to see, particularly Nathan, at the back end of, of an, well, in a final of an event. There was concerns about the injury. He's put them to bed. And Aspinall is getting back to the form that made him a major champion. 100. Yeah, former UK Open winner, one of five PDC titles that he has won to his name. Three of them coming on the Pro Tour, all of them in Barnsley, the most recent in March of last year. This is his first PDC ranking final since losing to Get Michael Van Gerwen in uh, November of last year on the Pro Tour Players' Championship 29 as Ryan Searle takes out the opening leg of the match. I think Ryan Searle may just have taken a lesson there from Dave Chisnell about the importance of not giving Nathan Aspinall any sort of head start or any sort of encouragement. I mean, the two players know each other very well. Searle will need no reminding about what Aspinall can and can't do. Uh, but uh, absolutely vital that Searle made no mistake on throwing the opening leg because uh, Aspinall today has been really tough to break down. Yeah, and you make a point. Chisel never recovered. That was the decisive fact that he had a chance to break back, but he couldn't convert. Forty. And Aspinall closed out victory on 80 with double top. And I mentioned Ryan Searles inside the top 16. Nathan Aspinall's just outside his 17th. If he wins this final, he will close the gap to £9,000 to get back in the top 16. Luke Humphreys hovering as well in 18th, but... That top 16. 140. They will both be at the match play, but you want that seeding spot, don't you? you yeah. Get a, it's it's going to be a hard draw, but it's a more favourable draw. And who knows? Oh, they may I'm play not. each other. It'll be a good rivalry, these two. Well, if Ryan Searle can post... 99. Oh, well, he almost stole that one from under the nose of uh, Nathan Aspinall. And he's strayed next door. So another one of those. Great camera angle there. 70. Can't quite find the double-double. And Ryan Searle aims to do what Dave Chisnell couldn't in the semi-final. That's break the Aspinall throw. He's done it already. That's a two-leg lead. Ryan Searle made a bright start to this final. He's had a, a tough passage through to the final stay. He's been in three last leg deciders. They were against Jimi Hendrix in round one. Jeffrey Deswan in a bold final. Rob Cross in that semi-final. Other victories 6-0 over Josh Rock in the quarters. 6-4 Gordon Mathers last 16. And there was a victory over Scotland's Alan Souter in round two. But Ryan Searle has played some decent stuff. His lowest average about 91. But he's peaked around about 100 against Josh Rock. But it's just been steady from Ryan. And it's a steady start for Ryan Searle here as he takes control early doors in this 93. final. Yeah, two very contrasting uh, routes to the final, I would suggest, as well. Aspinall with three Tumplus checkouts. Very impressive numbers from uh, Aspinall throughout the course of the day. And just that one last leg decider against Jermaine Watamena in round three as well. But, uh, yeah, 99. steady from Ryan Searle, if not spectacular. But um, certainly... He'll be the happier of the two with the way this one has started out. 140. And a, a little subplot as well. There's the, the role in 16 order in merit and how key it is to be in that. And Nathan Aspel's knocking on the door of that again. He will be in the qualifiers on Friday. 100. But these runs here could put him in the mix to be in those seeding spots. The European tours, massive events, big prize money. Game shot. But he's got work to do here first. Nathan Aspel, that is now 3 0. Ryan Searle. Finishing on tops 120 and in the blink of an eye, really, Searle finds himself three legs to the good in this final. Looking to join Michael Van Gerwen and maiden title winner Danny Janssen as a champion in this triple header this weekend in Barnsley. 
Well, he almost took out the 1-2-4 checkout earlier, but there was the Shanghai on 20s for a 3 nil lead. So uh, two holes of throw either side of the early break. I don't think uh, Aspinall will be panicking just yet, but uh, certainly got a lot to think about yeah, here. But I've always liked watching Ryan Searle. So like you say, he's, he's, it's very steady. It's very consistent. It, there's no drama sometimes with Ryan. He just goes about his business very quietly, very effectively. 140. Quite a f softly spoken individual as well. There's no dramas, histrionics, nothing like that. Just quietly going about his business. And there's a 180. And once again, down to that 124 checkout. Aspinall looking at 102. 82 away now. Couldn't find the treble 14. 94 that would have left tops and as it is Searle with a second opportunity at 1-2-4 18s finds it bullseye 99 oh, and that would have put him 4-0 up and that would have then obviously seen Nathan Aspel win the next eight legs like yesterday but he is going to get a chance to be 4-0 up but that guarantees nothing Peter Wright raced into a four leg lead yesterday Van Gouin rattled off eight to win Aspel can't look Went. but he gets a reprieve Got to keep himself together, Nathan, here. Well, that's three darts he's missed for a 4-0 lead. Bit of a let off this for Nathan Aspinall, who shot. does find double four with his second dart in hand. And, well, he'll be relieved it's only 3-1 because it could so easily have been 4-0. But Ryan Searle not standing on ceremony here, is he? Because he's straight into the red stuff once again. And that's a second 180 of the match. Three perfect darts to start things off. Make that six, actually, in this leg as a whole. Good response from Nathan. As he's got a foothold in this final now, but... 140. Impressed with Ryan Searle after the opportunities missed to go four legs in front. Starts the leg with a max, and then followed by a 140. 180. Aspinall fires back with a 180. He went six perfect darts into a nine yesterday on the stream. He's Peter Wright. Can he complete the job here? We've had a nine data this weekend from Maras Rasmut and Simon Whitlock. Not going to have one here. 91. And despite the threat of the nine data, he may well lose the leg anyway. Gang Double shot. four after the opening, treble 18. And look at that. I mean, what a leg that was. That was absolutely class from both. Nathan Aspinall threatened the nine data, but Ryan Searle winning it nevertheless brilliant stuff those legs hurt more than when you miss doubles at times because nathan aspinall fired in a couple of 180s didn't even get a go probably thinking right, i'm going to break back and get this final well and truly on but it's ryan searle who hits the halfway stage 4-1 against nathan aspinall look at the throw of ryan searle absolutely effortless isn't it yeah, it's really good to watch, and uh, Aspinall's in a match here, certainly. 100. Made the point before, just the one break, but 4-1 does look very, very sizable, doesn't it? Yeah, a little slip there from Ryan. That's a, been a rare thing so far in this final. Remember, Ryan, the winner of two Players' Championship titles, one here in Barnsley in August of last year. 77. Brilliant switch. Year before. Sorry, a brilliant switch from Nathan. Just to stay in touch. 98. Well, he's left himself that Shanghai again. He did it in leg three, but he Game won't get shot. the chance because Nathan Aspinall has found double 12 for 4-2. It's a holder throw. Needs to find a break sooner or later, though. And the way that Ryan Searle is starting off legs once again here. 137. Aspinall under the cosh already. And a single five will not aid his cause very well either. It's been played at a really good pace, this match, as well. Yeah, it seems like we've got to six legs played in no time, doesn't it? And 40. they're two players that suit each other's rhythm. I noticed watching bits and pieces of the Aspinall de Sousa match, there was times where Aspinall clearly lost his rhythm because of the time that was being taken. Right, so, I mean... The Sousa, well, I don't think he was doing anything wrong. It's just the way he is. But I don't think Aspinall relished that situation where he was being stopped in his tracks. No, but he managed to keep a lid on it, didn't he, and close out victory. Extraordinary match, that. Said it earlier on, 10 legs played, one holder throw. But good performance from Nathan, and he's trying to force the issue here. 
But he may rely on a missed double to even have a go at the 103. Yeah, Doesn't sure. get that missed double. And Aspinall, to be fair, has been knocking on the door on the last couple of occasions on the Ryan Searle throw. But just can't get a chance to finish. He was on 50 in the last leg that Ryan Searle threw first. Didn't get a shot. He was on 103 there. Didn't get a shot. Searle is three away. What a great leg that was as well. Both players down to 103 after nine darts. And Searle finishing things off with a 103 checkout. He's producing the Tumblers checkouts in this final as well. 57. The last two legs where Ryan Searle's thrown first, Nathan would have had to go nine darts to break. And if he can make his move here, Ryan Searle, he can, he'll be able to taste the title. He's getting closer. 140. Yeah, vital final dart that for Aspinall to get down to a finish of 164. Searle here on 281. 100. So six darts for Aspinall from here for a hold of throw to trail 5-3 instead of 5-2. Just a couple of loose darts here and there for Nathan Aspinall. 40. They've been more prominent as far as he's concerned than for Ryan Searle. There is actually a chance that Searle could steal this, you know, with Aspinall just proving a little bit sluggish in that previous visit, but that's that's not really too much good for Ryan Searle either. No, that's the only downside when players throw quick. If they miss, it looks very reckless, and that last dart did look reckless from Ryan. Game but shot. that isn't reckless. Aspinall hanging on in there, 5-3 now. And who knows how important that fourth leg of the match could have been. Ryan Searle 60. had darts to move 4-0 in front, and since then, Nathan Aspinall has held throw quite comfortably. Well, what a final this has been. 100. Some plus checkouts. Really good scoring. Great consistency. 83. And both players just seemingly bringing out the best in each other. All I think all helps and aided by the early break as well. It just really put an extra gloss on this final as well. 57. Another layer of intrigue. Decent averages as well from the pair. And the 105 mark. 174. And that ramps it up a bit as well. Ryan Searle again is proving hard to beat on his own throw. It's not as effective as the other legs, but Aspinall needs a 180 just to leave a finish. Yeah, 160 behind here, and uh, yeah, needs to fill it up, but he won't fill it up. And there you see, he lurched into that one a little bit. There's a bit of a grimace from Nathan Aspinall, and just a ton. That won't really cut the mustard at this stage of the match, and certainly at this stage of the leg as well. 60. But that's just a little encouragement for Nathan Aspinall. Just the 60 scored for Ryan Searle, down to 124. Once again, Loose first dart from Nathan Aspinall, single five. Good pick off, needed that. And he's just finished one, two, four. Is Ryan Searle going to return the favour? Well, double 11 will do that. Nathan smiling, he knew it was going and it does go. Ryan Searle moves six, three and exportingly acknowledged by Nathan Aspinall. We've seen a lot of that from Nathan today. Yeah. He applauded a shot from Joe's earlier, a shot from Dave Chisholm with the 170 and respect to how well Ryan Searle's playing from Nathan. Nathan's playing well too, but just cannot get that breaker throw and he needs two of them if he's going to win this final. There's the averages. That illustrates just how well Nathan's playing, but it's Ryan Searle who's doing the right things at the right time. He's got that break and he's just consolidating it and he's two legs away from the title. 60. Another brilliant finish from Ryan Searle. Double 11 for the 1 2 4 checkout. Terrific versatility on the finishing as well from Ryan Searle. 25. Um, not just today, but from what we've seen of him on the Pro Tour and on the European Tour and on the biggest stages of them all as well. 60. He's very comfortable, he's very versatile, very adept, and nothing seems to phase him. 83. And Ryan Searle is making his move for the double break. Aspinall, chances are in the balance, but he won't give up. And timing from Aspinall to get himself back in the leg, fourth maximum of the match. But he's under pressure to take the one on one. It's a great setup from Ryan Searle. Absolutely superb. 153 to set up double 10, but Aspinall may have other ideas here. Double 16 for 6 4. And that could be that because the way Ryan Searle has been finishing off, 
I'm pretty confident that he'll take out this double ten for a 7-3 lead. That's just nudge the wire. He's not there yet, you know. Hope springs eternal here for Nathan Aspinall, but hope is quickly extinguished with that third and final dart. And Ryan Searle, it's another break of throw. And there is, you have to say, very little prospect of Searle letting this one slip. Beaten finalist at the very start of the Pro Tour campaign against Luke Humphreys, but this one's surely there for the taking now. Yeah, in prime position to add to win his first title of the year a couple of breaks a throw it looks comfortable but Nathan Aspinall's played his part he's played his part throughout the day and he won't give it up here but it's hard to find a case Ryan Searle has been in exquisite form 80 and Ryan Searle will move up to 15 in the rankings he will leapfrog Dirk Van Dijvenbode if he closes up victory here 100 Well, he's not there yet. He's still got a load of work to do. He's still got plenty of darts to throw 60. and plenty of points to be scored and just 60 there as well. But uh, you'd certainly rather be in Ryan Searle's shoes right now than Nathan Aspinall's. The 34-year-old from Somerset closing in on what would be a third PDC senior title. And he's second here at the Metrodome in Barnsley after his success in August of last year. 140. Back on track. Yeah, timing. And it puts him... 143 points ahead of Nathan and 143 points away from winning the title. 81. Not enough, not enough for Nathan. It's in Searle's hands. Six darts to clinch victory. And just tee it up. 93. That's okay. And he will return and have some match darts. Nathan just needs to apply some pressure. But it's looking like a Ryan Searle victory here in Players' Championship 11. 105. Ryan Searle then 50 points away from a third PDC title, Game Topsy once, and Ryan Searle celebrates an 8-3 win against a resurgent Nathan Aspinall. A great performance from Aspinall today, but in the end he fell well short in the final against Ryan Searle, and it's Searle who celebrates a first title of 2022, beaten by Luke Humphreys on day one in Barnsley back in February. Two times a PDC title winner before today, but there is the hat-trick for Ryan Searle, and there are the numbers behind this latest success. Some brilliant finishing from Ryan Searle in that final. The 124 check out on the double 11, the highlight in leg nine, and a 103 average to boot. A brilliant performance in the final, and a brilliant performance for Ryan Searle in Players' Championship 11. Come and stand here, pal. I'll let you have a drink, don't worry. <laughs> you can do what you want. Just that. <clears throat> Talking into that one. Oh. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming we're going to go for it because I'm not hearing anything here. Look, Ryan, congratulations. That final, best performance of the day from you, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's a frustrating game. You know, the last two days I've been playing really well and, you know, losing out. And today I started really bad, I, you know, Scrape for a couple of games, averaging you know dot on ninety pretty much, um, but sort of got myself together and you know played all right after that. Well, it was, it wasn't your top level until the final there, where it was where it was really really good, but there were games where you found ways to win. I mean, the, the semi final against Rob Cross was was an absolute cracker, wasn't it? It must be a really satisfying game to win. You know, he was really pushing. Yeah. It kind of felt like a bad game, to be fair. I think, you know, he missed a lot of doubles and he kept letting me in and letting me in. And, you know, when I play Rob, he, he never normally does that, you know. Um, so, you know, obviously, I only beat Rob for the first time at the, at the Players' Champs last year, so to beat him again is nice. And, um, you know, I was up for that final and I thought, you're not losing another final, you know. Was it four or five in a row that I've lost? And I was thinking... Nah, whatever happens, you're not losing that today. How frustrating has that been? It is four finals in a row that you'd lost. I mean, I know you've pick, you picked up a title last year, won the year before. Now you've picked up your annual title now, mm. Ryan. But it could have been loads last year, couldn't yeah. it? it? It is frustrating. Um, that probably comes comes down to part of how my personality is. I'm you know I'm pretty laid back, and sometimes I'm probably not up enough for the final. Sometimes and I'm just happy to be there, you know and. I'm trying to change that, you know, Sundays I normally, I'm normally on the way, halfway home by now, usually <laughs> on a Sunday. Um, but that's something mentally that I've been trying to work on. Um, 
you know, I want to stay in the top 16 and get even higher. Well, look, I mean, if you're trying to work on your mentality, mentality particularly for Sundays, uh, I mean, don't go learning that off Gary Anderson. I know you've practiced <laughs> No, a bit, I know, yeah. But yeah that, he's not the man to learn. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, but do you feel now that over the last 18 months that you have firmly put yourself amongst the elite? Because as you say, last year, if you had a couple of those finals, a couple more finals have gone your way, then people would be talking about you even more than mm. they are now, wouldn't they? Yeah, I mean, it's difficult. I, it's a long day when you get to a final and it's hard to keep up that level. Obviously, I lost out to Luke Humphreys and Rob Cross. I can't remember who the other, the other ones were that I lost in the final to. But you know it's difficult, and there was no way I was losing that final two. I don't know what Nathan, I don't care what Nathan was going to hit. Every 120 average, I was going to beat him. You know that was the way I felt, and I think that's the way I need to feel more often. What was it like for you? Because those the semi final and then the final, playing Rob Cross mm. and then playing Nathan. I mean, it's a couple of great stories there, isn't it? With Rob, obviously, you both came up from the challenge mm. store. He becomes a superstar, and you have to sit and wait. Yeah. With Nathan, you played each other in your first final. Mm. He won it. He becomes a superstar. Mm. You've had to sit and wait. Is yeah. it Ryan Searle's time now to be a superstar? Well, I'm not. <laughs> I'm in no rush. You know what I mean? And uh, um, yeah, it's just, it's just one of those. I feel like. If I play my game, I can beat anyone. But sometimes my own sort of lackadaisical point of view can can let me down. I think that's the only thing that really lets me down because I feel like if I play my game, I can beat anyone. Um, but sometimes you can play a game, and that's sometimes not enough. Like I played Ross Smith yesterday. Um, he beat me six one. I think there was 11 180s and seven legs, and most of them were his. And there's nothing you can do. You just got to sort of hold your hands up and say, "Well played." Um, you know, it's a little bit frustrating, but if I'm being 100% honest, I didn't feel like I was going to be standing here talking to you today. That's, that's being 100% honest. I was just, you know, a bit frustrated and I thought, you know, just try and get your head on and we got there eventually. Well, look, winning can become a habit. Uh, you know, Michael Van Gogh has been talking about it, he was talking about it yesterday. Another player who'd pick up one title a year and then suddenly popped is Johnny Clayton. Mm. Now, do you look at the ferret and think, I can do that? Mm. I love the ferret. Everybody loves the yeah. ferret. He's a top guy. Um, yeah, I was talking to, the, to Luke Humphreys today. Obviously, we practiced together and we were saying that winning Pro Tours is probably harder than winning majors just because of how the standard is now. And um, I'm, I'm really looking forward to the Grand Prix. I feel like that's my event. If I'm going to win a major, that'll be the one. You know, obviously starting on double top, that's my favourite double. And, uh, but I'm playing decent, but it's just getting over the line at times. Sometimes I've struggled to get over the line and, you know, I've done it today. So uh, let's try and do it a few more times this season.